Uh, BGL got a resounding nope from this audience. A resounding nope. Okay, cool. Um, let's move. Let's go to watch. Let's do Tiger Belly. Um, I don't even have it up here. But <clears throat> do you have? Is the video up out yet? Let's see if the video's out. But yeah, big up, <laughs> big up everybody. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Big up flipping <laughs> Trish. That was an amazing. Call. It's a D three. What's a D one and D two? I didn't even catch it at first when he first said it. Such a weird thing to brag about, but Americans have a weird thing with sports like that, and especially when they haven't played at a really high level, they tend to kind of latch onto and hold on to the most minor things as some sort of weird marker of athletic success or something. It's very, very strange. Um, or to make them seem badass. I don't know. I don't really get it. I don't really know why they do that, but I guess it is what it is. Oh, okay, it's not out. The video portion of the show isn't out yet, so let's uh, let's listen to the... Um, the, what you call it the audio version of it and hear what our guy had to say about the entire thing where should we get this pod bay in it yes we pod bay let's jump it on up into the screen and see what this extravaganza was about <clears throat> so let me get this up on the screen bear with me let me also mute myself before i cough again Come on. Are you loading? Yeah, there you go. It's cool. I don't want to share the episode. Leave me alone. Cool. So let's jump right into it. This is Brendan Shaw on the Tiger Belly podcast. Personally, if it was me and if I was Bobby Lee and Kalila, I wouldn't have had this guy on the show. I don't think there was anything to be gained from it. And judging by the clips I've seen or I've heard, um, clearly nothing was gained from this. Uh, Brendan kind of doubled down in a weird redacted sort of way. They tried to their best to explain to him why what had happened, you know, was bad, why whatever suspicion he had was wrong, but it clearly didn't get through his head because he's already made his mind up or he's incapable of thinking on any kind of critical level. But regardless, it is what it is. Um, it's, again, I don't think served any purpose. No one really won from this conversation. It was a way, complete waste of time, I felt like. And if anything, it made um, Brendan look worse than what he's already looking now. Um, he's incapable of being self-aware, incapable of admitting his faults, incapable of just kind of allowing the person to sort of, you know, share their pain without him also painting himself as a victim. And we're going to be witnessing this in real time. So let's play this and see how it goes. All right, guys. Uh, John I'm Crux. I'm going to ease into, just naturally ease into it. We don't have to get into it right away. Let's just ease into it. Everything's fine. Okay. Is it? <laughs> is it, is is it? It's not. Well, I was about to, I was about to drive that... my car off the piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's just ease into it. Well, that's why you're here, because we don't want you to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. go ahead, Gil. Start. I'll just be a cop. Uh, let me just start, okay. and then and then I'll introduce you. It'll be fine. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll start when you when you guys ease into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's uh, what uh, I'll uh, All right. Go ahead. There's a calm countdown. Five. Calm countdown. Four. Three. three to you motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead. Go. Four, <laughs> four, four hitmen coming. Five. Um, Zoroastrianism, mm. Judaism. Wait, what is that again? It's one of the original, way right before original. Christianity. Right. Google it. I might become one. I've, um, you know, I've said some really weird, fucked up things, you know, on radio shows and podcasts, but. In general, it's about just physical comedy and just having fun, and um, it's a way to uh, unleash energy and to express myself. Uh, but the tour, but you know, I've always only said positive things about you to people, and um, and the people that you're, you 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 do your podcast with. You know, I mean, Theo and I are, are very good friends, and. Um, so that being said, um, let's introduce our guest. Um, he's uh, the co-host, or it's his podcast, uh, Fighter and the Kid, and um, also Are you say Tiger Belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost said Tiger I'm Belly. a little nervous. King, <laughs> Sting, and the Wing. Um, let's give Brendan Schaub. Give him a round of applause. Um, I'm here to convert you guys to Scientology. That's what I'm here. The number one religious podcast. We watched that documentary yeah, years yeah. ago. Insane. Insane. Yeah. 
Um, so I, I, I just want to. So I just want to open up Most with awkward podcast. <laughs> this is really. I've awkward. done ten thousand. Right. <laughs> I know, me too. Freshly. <sighs> but what? Yeah. Chefs. No cook. Beat your listeners. Twenty five dollars. The Celeb Kingdom has Brooklyn, and do you know why? Sheets. Wants Lux sheets. <laughs> Both you guys, and you have always been nice to me. And that goes so far with me because when I came to comedy, I'm, I was a tough sell, man. Still am. Yeah. So the people that were nice to me, I never forget. Uh-huh. I never, ever forget. Ever. And I, you know what? Um... Oh, really, dude? You're nice to them. You never forget. Oh, really, dude? As Chris Lee would say, so nice to them that you... Jump in the DMs of one of your, you know, biggest fans, girl, with a flipping demon eyes emojis and peach, whatever thing he sent. God, lying already, out of the gate, lying already. Gotta love Brendan. I believe you. I believe the, you. I believe you. Um, which makes it this a little bit difficult for me because um, of what. You know, because we're just going to lay, lay it all out there, um, what happened a week and a half ago. Um, and I just want to kind of slowly get into it, you know what I mean? And Because I just want to talk about the truth and Me about too. and getting to the root of whatever this problem is. I mean, okay, the, so. the only reason I'm here yeah. is to get to that okay. and for us to move on. Okay. It's literally the only reason I'm here. All right. So let's start with, um, I'm in Oklahoma. I'm at dinner. Um, and you text me. That there's a journalist doing an article about me. Mm-hmm. No, not 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 just you. Keep going. Yeah, there's a journalist yeah. that's doing an article about. Well, on, on the text I just read it, um, you said it was about me. Maybe mm-hmm. you know I mean you implied something else, but that's what I read. Mm-hmm. And then I texted you. What the exact words for um, a journalist contacted me? Not good for you. Not good for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And um, which got me spinning a little bit, and I for sure texted you what, and you said you can't talk, you know, do it through text. Then um, before we talked on the phone, um, I had a conversation with a cohort of mine. You know, um, I don't want to throw his name in there, but um, and you had texted him the same thing, um, which he found a little weird. So anyway, I called or you called. I don't forget how that happened, and all of a sudden I was in a three-way call with you and somebody that you are associated with. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say his name. And um, You can, though. He, he I don't want to. Th- okay. Yeah, I don't want to. Can I? You, you can. can. You, I mean, you can you if can. you want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was Brian Callen. Yeah. Just so you know, Brian did, before you go on, I don't want to interrupt you. Brian did say on Fire and the Kid how he royally messed up with that engagement. Mm. Royally messed up. Okay. But carry on. Uh-huh. So, um, that's probably the most egregious part of this whole entire story. It's all well and good, Brendan doing whatever self deception that he wants in order to make himself feel better about the situation, to paint himself out to be the victim. Cool, do what needs to be done in it, whatever needs to be done to sleep well at night, whatever needs to be done to, you know, save his marriage or whatnot. I don't know. I mean, it's not my business. Cool. The sad thing is, it the most egregious part is how he managed to get Brian to jump out of the window, literally, and essentially commit suicide and kill any friendship that he had with Bobby Lee, when in reality, him and Bobby Lee have been comedic friends or work friends, whatever you may be called for, maybe close to 30 years, right? Mad TV people, people from the comedy store, both passed, like they've been around the block, and he would throw all of that away on the mere suggestion impression um whatever inference that potentially bobby lee was behind the flipping fire in the kids subreddit or some bullshit like my word man the the flipping yarns that brendan has people spinning for him is just insane especially when you when you realize how redacted he is it's not even like he's very sophisticated he's a very brutish almost blunt force type of guy but the people around him who really like him seems to really really go for bat for him brian's willing to flip and sacrifice a friendship with a long-time friend for it one that probably would never recover from the back of this 
But I, I found it to be extremely traumatic in the, in the sense that if it was somebody that um, I didn't know, um, that'd be one thing. But, um, you know, Brian and I have had a very long relationship. 30 in, years? In, yeah, a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been to his house for um, Super Bowl parties. Um, we were on the same show together, not at the same time, but he's a Mad TV alumni as, as well. Also, a slight bit of annoyance. I'm not, I'm not going to pause it too often, but a slight bit of annoyance. I do hate this little thing that he's doing where he's trying to make it seem as if they're having like a cordial podcast chat. This isn't cordial. You're only there because of what was alleged on the podcast that you jumped into Kalina's DM seven years ago. You offered Annie Liederman allegedly a drug walk and, and you tried to make it seem as if it didn't happen. They reiterated it happened and they exposed the whole cabal of threatening influ threatening um you know bully culture that exists in stand-up comedy in la this is why you're there it's not because they, they want to have a catch-up and find out how you're doing like this weird kind of friendly friendly thing he's doing is really bizarre man as i am um and him and i have been really kindred spirits yeah you know comedy um, store guys comedy store mm -hmm. guys and um you know so when you guys called, you um, it was you and Brian, and um, you said that I um, that you guys my career was going to be over, um, that you guys have evidence, you know what I mean, that um, that I'm some Reddit mastermind, that, that there's you have files and proof that um, you can trace, you know me from reddit back to my house the url you know um the ip address, the IP address yeah. and that i um have been for five and s or six years have been um coyly and and you know mischiefly you know you know contributing to threads that were um not contributing what didn't you say it was well from what you had said that we were responsible responsible mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and that um you know that you were gonna expose me to rogan and all these people and that i should get a lawyer and that i um i mean this is what you you told me and it, and also just mind you it was at a level 10 of rage it wasn't like a soft-spoken like you know very I mean? aggressive yeah it was extreme you know what i mean threats and then you called Kalila things I don't even want to, want to mention. I did not. Call I know you Kalila. didn't. I I would, I and I haven't heard what you guys said. I I don't talk like that. I would never call Kalila that. That's right. Not I don't get this part. So who did call her these things? If there's only three people on the phone, Brian, Bobby Lee, and Brendan, who did call him, call her that stuff then? Did Bobby? Did Brian get on the line and start blasting Kalila and calling her a bitch and a slut or a whore and stuff? Who did say these things then? Let's put that out there. Not in Brandon, my you called me that on the phone call we had. I did not call you that. Brent, you I did not. No, but you don't know what uh, you don't know what he they said, so you can't. Uh, it, it, the stuff that I got was pretty on par to just about what, the worst what, thing what, you could tell okay. I, it, Brian apologized. What Brian said on there, and even I told him that was too. That was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. But what what I found to be um, heartbreaking was going into a character assassination where you were saying not you. In particular, I don't even know remember what because I was such such in 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 such I was so trembling almost, um, calling me a coward, weak, spineless. Um, and my only defense to that is, is that I just have my own way of dealing with the world. You know what I mean? Because I um, grew up in such a traumatic childhood. I you know. I try to be passive and I try to not, I mean, I'm afraid of confrontation as everyone knows in terms of my character. And, um, you know, I said to Brian days after th that assault um, that yeah, I no longer want to be a fr his friend. Mm -hmm. um, and did you guys speak on the phone or yeah, we did. Text? Yeah. And he we apologized, spoke on the he said? Yeah, he did apologize. Yeah. You see again how he's doing this thing where he's removing himself from the issue and making it seem like he's the middleman. Why don't you address what he said? He said you called him weak, um, spineless, pathetic, whatever it may be called. Why don't you address those things? Like explain why you said those things. 
Maybe say sorry. Maybe inter- maybe, if you're going to interrupt, interrupt to say sorry. Why is he interrupting to be like, mm, did you talk to him yesterday or you text him? It's like garbage human, mate. Garbage human. But, um, yeah, I mean. He doesn't expect you to be his friend. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's done. Um, yes. But, you know, that being said, also, I, I'll never, I don't have any, I would never say anything bad about him. I think that he is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. I really do. Um, and can, can, can I give some context to, to that call? No, please. And we definitely, I'll admit straight up, we definitely didn't handle that the way two adults should have hand, handled mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. The context behind that is, is I don't, I, I never talk about this stuff, ever. The, our podcast is usually fun. We don't talk about, you know, the negative stuff that I deal with. Brian wasn't aware of the the negativity that I deal with. Everybody gets stuff on Reddit. Everybody in this room, I don't know if you guys do. You you guys I do, do for I do, sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure Kalila does. We all do. Being a woman in this space. So there's a difference between hate and then straight evil, toxic, criminal behavior. Mm. And for, it to, for six years, I've dealt with this. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to criticize my comedy, the podcast, so be it. That's the internet. That's, a, that's what we sign up for. But when it crosses over into harassment of my family, death threats, my kids, going for sponsors, companies that I work with, my business, that's, that's where it gets dicey. Mm. So the, it, and it would have to get so dicey to the point where my team gets notified on this. Because I'm not on social media, and it's, or sure as hell not on Reddit or any of these forums. And the reason I'm not on there is not because I think I'm better than social media. I don't need it. Of course, I yeah, do. Yeah, you do. No, you I'm do. not on it because it hurts my feelings. Mm. No, you, you're not on it because you think you're better. You're not on it because you don't think you're above feedback. You're not on it because you don't want to lower yourself to communicating with your fans. You're not on it because most of your fans, most of the people that communicate with you on social don't think you're funny. If you used to, if you was getting, you know, love on social like other people do, or like other people who communicate with their fans, he would obviously communicate with them. But he doesn't because he doesn't get love from it. And then he adopts this Joe Rogan stance, which because he, he he can't do the Joe Rogan stance because he's not Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan cannot and should not communicate with his fans on social media because he has too many. There'll be too many points of influence and input coming at him at once to keep abreast of it i can only imagine what it's like being joe rogan on a day-to-day basis walking around la and shit having people stop you every 10 minutes imagine on social media people jumping into your money to people jumping into your inbox asking for money asking for advice all this stuff they want to get on the show it's just too much so joe should have somebody sort in his social or have somebody maybe relaying back messages but if you're someone like a brendan all this kind of people you should maybe have an idea what people are saying about you on social media you should maybe be tapped in the fact that he doesn't want to be tapped in because it's not all positive he wants to live in a world where the only content or only communication coming back to you from your fans is positive it can't be negative it's negative it gets blocked How, how do you live that way this is what you've created this and then he's created this in weird vortex where people go out of their way to say the most meanest things to get his attention He's done it to himself. I because I can't handle that stuff. I don't do well with it. It was so toxic I got out. Um, you're entrusting a team to report back to you. And when you hear from that team, you're taking you're receiving it as gospel. This must be accurate information that I'm receiving from, from these guys, yes. Yeah, so this is how we get here. Good question. Yeah. So this is how we get here. So hate again, hate I understand. There's a lot to hate on. But again, when it crosses over into criminal and this other stuff, and they get notified, and they get notified because a member of that group is mm. abusing a six-year-old child with autism, mm. and then the Reddit moderator gets affected, and they start talking. So then they look into it, and mm-hmm. that's how we get here. And they look into it, and the they go, hey, let you know, one of the six accounts that has done most of the posting is associated with, with Tiger Belly. Doesn't this sound awfully convenient? Kalala gets onto a podcast and is riffing with her other podcast co-host about shitty dudes. Annie mentions a story where some dude offered her a drug walk. She declined, obviously. That then spurns Kalila to remember a story about quite possibly the same person sliding into her DMs around Christmas or something when that person was in a relationship and when Kalila was in a very public relationship 
with Bobby Lee. It then gets back to this said person that it could be him being exposed and just out of the blue, a, a an investigation falls on his lap where it's alleged that a account on Reddit that might be responsible for a video where the a person is attacking somebody with autism, a kid with autism or something. Like, come on, bruv. Come on. What is all these fanciful stories? And who, who are they talking about? Are they talking about Unique? Are they talking about that video where he's shouting at somebody in his house or something? It's a live stream, right? Where he's on live stream and someone comes in and maybe it's a, there's some sort of physical altercation. I don't know. I didn't look too much into it. I don't really give a shit, really. But is that the excuses he's using to justify what? Not saying sorry for sliding into the DMs, for threatening Bobby Lee with his career. They didn't even, it's not even like they got on the phone and asked him, hey, did you, are you on Reddit? Do you know how to set Reddit up? Like, do you know these accounts? I don't know. Just ask them a question. Like, go, had him to sit sit down. Like, let's go through this because this is a bit weird. No, they immediately threw off the handle. Not because of he, his alleged ties to Reddit, but because his wife dared to expose a story that would embarrass him. That's basically the reason. Now, with all the toxic hate, everything that I get, yeah, this awful stuff, to f I expect that from people I don't know. When I found out it was somebody that I know, yeah, but that, it, that, that, and that's where the aggressiveness came from. But is it true? Th that's why I'm here. Um, I think this is not helpful because this happened a week and a half ago when, in fact, this drama, if we're going to talk about context started in January. And I think while I really appreciate you being here, I truly believe you're um, a guy who cares for his family. I feel, I do believe you feel you're on the back foot here. Um, and you know, you feel like your livelihood is under attack. I understand the hurt all around that. Appreciate it. But there is a lot more context to what you guys are talking about, which is that phone call that happened a week and a half ago. and if it's okay with you, because I don't want there to be any confusion moving forward, I'd like to start from the very beginning and just get to the God honest truth. Because if we don't do this in a systematic way of when it started and how did we end up the, here? The, st the start with uh, when I was notified of the Reddit group? No. What do you want to start? No. The start with a Trash Tuesday podcast. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean... That, that, but here, here's where it gets conflicted is... Those are almost two separate things. It certainly didn't feel that way. And, and, and I understand that, and I and I respect. <sighs> I'm glad Kalila's there because Bobby Lee is so he's so not confrontational, and he's so clearly uncomfortable being in a space with Brendan and talking about this that he's kind of clammed up like he always does. So I'm really thankful that Kalila's there because if Kalila wasn't there. Bobby Lee might end up agreeing to get on the phone with Brendan or with Brian and hash it out and pretend they're all friends and talk about comedy store stuff and comment on special. That would have probably happened because he just would have wanted to have peace. But I'm glad Kaleida's like coming up and saying, no, let's just talk about this properly. Like this is... <sighs> He's saying they're two... No, they're not two separate issues. They're connected. They're connected. That's why you shouted at the guy on the phone. If they're not, why would you shout at someone on the phone? If they're not connected, because you're riled up. You are you're pissed off about the story getting out there about the drug walk and about this flipping DM. Like ah, oh, this guy. Back to we can talk about this so we get to the end of it. Mm. When it goes to the Reddit group, that's where the that call came from, and then th this this stuff that we're talking about with Trash Tuesday, mm -hmm. and. If I if I had a time machine and I could go back, I would have called. Th the reason we're here is because I didn't handle this well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I'll say this right now, and I'll get back to that Trash Tuesday stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's say, and I'm not saying this in any facet. I truly believe neither of you have anything to do with this Reddit group. Maybe someone on your team had or no. uh, 
Hold on, I'm just telling you from okay. my perspective. Okay. Like to, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and you can too. Because you my team do. is here, and I. And that's fine. I have, this is everybody in the. This yeah. is my family. Yeah. Yeah. So if yeah. you're coming to me saying you're not responsible, but your team is, you're coming for my family. I've been with these guys for eight years. I'm with you, Clyde. I'm with you, and I, I would love for you guys to explain. It. And that is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm here. Okay, but. And that's why I'm here. So. You know, Wait. go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> let's... How dare you too? How dare you be the one in the wrong? Then come to my platform and tell me how I should talk about this or how we should address this when I'm the one that's pissed off. I'm the one that should be getting a flipping apology. I'm the one. Re, Jemmy, like, what the fuck? The fucking neck on this man. He's now sat there pointing fingers at the staff telling them that they're responsible that like, it's your fault you got us basically in an in a in a roundabout way you're saying them you got us here if you didn't start that reddit forum or if you didn't start that reddit profile we wouldn't be here right now come on man let's you have your own timeline in your head of how this went down mm -hmm. and i have my own timeline and while i want to believe those two things are separate mm -hmm. this is the timing is very suspicious to but, me it, but it's i, I also can i just want just yeah. interject real quick all right all right um they're they're not separate to me because um you know during the conversation right when you guys called me you and brian right the the trash tuesday thing did come up in that because why did you, you and i talked about that that stuff before all this though bobby i That's don't right. want to get into the weeds can i just present a timeline so i don't want there to be confusion i'm so if happy really Kalan is there about the truth Thank i'd like God. the opportunity to just start from the beginning please, please do and Whatever if you, guys want if, to at, do. if you know if at any point you feel what i'm saying is truly unfair and unjustified mm -hmm. you can interject and say kalila let me clarify on that mm -hmm. but I, d I have written it down this is something that has taken so much of my mental Agreed. space and clarity I, I, and i don't want to live like this me Brandon. neither me, and I know, so. and I know you don't. And, and and again, if I can go back and, and finish this thought, is when, if I could, if I had a time machine, could go back, I would have called you directly. Thank you, you for saying. Because you and I don't know each other well I at don't all. Any facet. And when I came to you, and I'll tell you this right now, anybody out there, if you're gonna go at Kalila, you better be ready to go. You are not to be underestimated. You're very fucking smart. And oh, the flattery. Fuck off. And dude, and I and I told you this when, when we talked. Yeah. I said you should be a lawyer. Yeah, as good as you are on pocket, you should be a goddamn lawyer. That being said, if I could redo it, I would have called you direct and this would have been solved so easily. Also, with the other information I had, I don't want to get in the weeds, I don't uh -huh. want to throw anybody under the bus. With other information that I had from a person we all know in here, I I don't know him that well, and I don't know you that well. And that information, that information coming at me at the same time that the Trash Tuesday and all this stuff coming, it was too, it was like this perfect whirlwind. Right. But if I would have talked to you before mm -hmm. and you gave me the context, I went, that makes so much sense. Right. This does, this We'll get to the part help. where that information is then weaponized against me to people like Rogan and Whitney mm -hmm. and Schultz and people that are very influential in the podcast space. Mm -hmm. And the character, which wasn't fair to you, Clyde. the character assassination that mm -hmm. took place. Um, that I think you underestimated how much information was actually going to get back to me from these people. Um, but again, yeah. I really just want to boom. And I like how she's saying these things. And somebody that has a conscience, somebody that is somewhat decent and is really apologetic and really sorry for the mistake that they did and they really overstepped, they'd be injecting there and saying, oh, I'm really sorry. I fucked up there. I am know, my bad. He's just mm -hmm, mm -hmm, doing this weird stuff. Do you know what I mean? And someone mentioned it in the chat. I can't wait for the video for this to come out because the video is going to be very telling of the energies around them, but it's clearly a very, very tense um, conversation that they're having. And I'm, honestly, I'm so thankful Kalila's there because... He's trying to railroad the entire thing and make it seem like they pals. And there's one bit he's trying to make it seem like he's the middleman. He's coming in trying to mend the relationship between Brian Callan and Bobby Lee. It's like, no, 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 no. You're here because you started this mess. And now you're trying to excuse yourself from it. Like, come on. Take just 10 minutes. Go ahead. Yep. To offer a timeline. And if this doesn't work, it doesn't work. I just really just want to have 
a moment of fucking clarity in all of this. Um, I also want to add that in therapy, in every session, I hear a help. part of you is not the total of you. And I do believe you're a great father who loves his family. And you have regular human feelings that get triggered. Um, you have fears. You have all of these things. So I do offer empathy in that way. Um, so in... <laughs> <laughs> I wish this. I wish I was. I was funnier, and I could like offer levity, but I just don't. I feel like shit about it. Yeah, um, so here is what I have, and you know, hearsay and rumors are super damaging, and I just want to put that all to rest. Please do. Even this, Brendan, I would have loved to do privately. Me, okay, 100%. right. So when we when we showed up to H three podcast, um, that hurt my feelings. Yeah, um, it hurt mine as well. Um, but we'll get there. We'll get there. So when I went to showed up to H three podcast, this wasn't even in our world. It wasn't in our view, our mind. You know what I mean? And, and I don't know him, and I have no ill will toward right, him. Right, right. I don't know him, but from my understanding, from talking to mutual friends of ours, mm -hmm. that's what he does, right? Yeah, but he you know, does, we had done the podcast. Yeah, stuff? but we had done that podcast bef many times before. He's mm -hmm. done ours. Him mm -hmm. and his wife, Ila, and they're lovely. They're lovely, and yeah, I, I don't know. Look at him trying to discredit. Oh, he's such a... Oh. Come on, Brendan, man. Be redeemable, at least in this moment. At least just, like, let the situation be what it may. Let people say what they want to say without you having to rewrite the narrative and just try to mend it and make it right after the fact. He's there desperately trying to now discredit Ethan Klein in real time discredit the platform h3 share how hurt he was by that conversation like god almighty mate I'm, yeah, as again, people I'm they're no, lovely i don't know them you know um and you know it wasn't in our you know and I even on the drive back from there we just were in we were in a state of shock because you know i'm not one to you know air my l dirty laundry on air Right. Okay, and it was a private matter, and once he brought it up, there was just no way to get out of it. I tried, you know what I mean? I was a thinking machine. I mean, it was just like spinning, right? In honesty, I didn't try that hard. Yeah, yeah. I, I, know I was did. willing to and, 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 and I'll tell you why. And I, and I believe you guys. And the same thing with Schultz when he goes, hey, I want to bring up the hate. I didn't know he was going to bring up this so particular issue with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said nothing but complimentary things. I wanted to move on, which we did. You know, okay, we'll yeah, get to that too. so, uh, and um, just la one last thing is, is that so, we, you know, we said things that I was gonna die to the grave with, um, you know, my relationship with H3 is my own private af a matter, you know, what I mean, I didn't see it, but I but I heard completely that you guys were cut off, guys. and also, you know, people, I'm, I'm just responding to the things that I've read online saying that why did you do it in the first place? And you have to understand that. I had done it before, and it was never like that. I mean, we they had done ours, and I, I'd like to defend Ethan and Eli you here. In I love that. Them. Um, you know, but who's they asked, attacking them? They asked the question, and I don't know about you, and maybe that's how you felt. I don't want to invalidate your feelings on it, but I I was okay to talk about it. I know and I'll get were. to why I was okay to talk okay. about it. All right, <laughs> are we sure we have ten minutes? Of <laughs> All right, yeah. time might start. Time might start. Li then, like, we're gonna do a song? Let's, yeah. Da, 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 Timeline. <laughs> new segment never happening again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, that's not a new segment. <laughs> <if it was. laughs> the title of this file on my computer is the Shab Spectacle Extravaganza. Shab Spectacle Extravaganza. <laughs> Nervous about buying a mattress online. Helix Next. is the way to go. Fucking hell. You guys, girlfriend, because I have scoliosis. And it's too. <laughs> and that's why I turned to Roman because. Longer in bed. And it's really easy. Clinic so it's no prescription needle. Not oh. yours. I want your erect penis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So oh. on January 25th. A Trash Tuesday episode is released where Annie and I talk about a nameless comic who hit on us. And for me, um, that story that I told took place seven years ago, long time ago. You're referring to DMs. 
Right. They wh- did. Which I own and was completely stupid Thank and you. never should have done. You. Okay. Now, right. I'll defend myself. Like, just quickly going on here from this comment by Chris Ignacio, which says, Kylila and Annie, by telling the story, did open up this can of worms publicly. Yes. But as men, you can't do this. You can't do this thing where you do a faux pas, especially to the opposite sex. And because it happened a long time ago, it somehow removes the autonomy that the other person has in telling the story. The moment you get involved with somebody or you try to slide in their DMs or you try to holler or you try to smash or whatever you try to do in terms of a romantic or sexual way, you immediately do it with another person. So they're involved too. So the 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 situation that happens there, whether it leads to something or not, it's their story to tell as well. Now, if they don't want to tell it to protect you or because they are embarrassed by it as much as you are, cool. But if they want to tell it 10, 5, 17, 20, 55 years down the line, when you're on your deathbed, it doesn't matter. It's their story too, obviously. There's some tact involved in it. And if you want to be maybe, taste not to be tasteless, maybe you won't do it when somebody's about to get married or whatever it may be called. There, there are situations where it probably isn't appropriate. But in general, it's their story to tell as much as it is yours. You got them involved in it by propositioning them for sex or for sexual favors or whatever, or for a date. It's their story to tell. So this notion that, you know, Kalila was out of bounds for mentioning it is nonsense. This story that people are putting out that Annie was out of bounds for mentioning it was nonsense too. He tried. He swung in a miss. Again, no one's no one's saying he shouldn't try, even even morally. People cheat on each other all the time. It happens every single day, every minute of the day. No one's saying him attempting to do it wasn't a good thing or shouldn't have been done, whatever it may be called. But he did it. He swung in a miss. Those ladies are now free to say what they want about the situation. It is their story as much as it is theirs. And if they want to make a joke about it and have a little kiki moment, let them. So what it happened. If you're actually sorry and you generally are apologetic about it, you wouldn't bet it wouldn't matter if you have actually spoke about it with your partner and you've kind of tried to work through it it shouldn't matter either it's going to be embarrassing but if if you have kind of got over it and you've mended and you've kind of changed for the better and you're a better person a better man a better friend for it it really shouldn't matter but the fact that he is going out of his way to twist this and say this and cover this and interrupt here and all this sort of conflating and only addressing it now because it's blown up is proof that maybe he hasn't turned into the person that he wanted to and this is still pretty raw but regardless this idea that they shouldn't be talking about it is crazy i own that and that that, and that was not right and i've definitely changed and you apologize and i apologize way before then yeah and And but then also but so hold on Kyle, real quick but then also so apologize see i didn't like it with how bobby this is why i'm happy Kyle is it because bobby's too afraid of confrontation he should have just let bobby he should have let brendan just speak and naturally apologize now he shouldn't gave him an out and said and you apologize it doesn't matter like i'm talking about it now and it hurt me just apologize again it's like when somebody shares i lost my father or my mother 20 years ago you still say sorry to hear that. You still say my condolences. Um, you know what I mean? That sucks. Whatever. You offer something there. Some sort of human emotion <laughs> to this story. Do you know what I mean? So that we've talked about it before. Trust me, I've been to therapy over this stuff. That's also another reason I'm on social media. So <laughs> I don't engage in any of that stuff. So I learned from that. Sorry, I'm sorry. You sent someone some fucking peach bum emojis. You offered them a trog walk and you're now excusing yourself because you're in therapy for it. Does it doesn't that say more about you, mate? How many DMs are you letting off in a given week? I know we all have our moments of flipping temptation. I know I do. Right? On a Friday night, you're out there, you maybe had a bit too much to drink, you maybe ingested too much white powder in your nose, and you're feeling like flipping Superman, and you start getting on the DMs. But usually it's people you know. You're not just there flying off the handle in your discovery, just shooting your shot at anyone and everyone that you see in a bikini or something. God almighty, mate. What are you DM exactly? Someone as Mr. Singh said, can I get a trunk walk, please? <laughs> excuse me you don't know me but can i can i take you out sometime and take your spin spin the block in my truck <laughs> as far as the annie stuff goes th- that that's where i do have to defend myself 
Okay. After you know, she, you guys didn't say my name, right? I get or but you alluded we didn't. to me. She the the illusion the was that a word? The illusion, yeah. That's alluding, right. alluding. alluding? Illusion is a word, but not for this. Yeah, yeah. that's more shin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah shin's shin not word. here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she had. Uh, the line was, what am I going to do? Suck your unfunny dick. And then I yeah. I came back as with... As far as me, and, but she, uh, again, I, I didn't see it, but as far as she's saying, I I asked her to walk my car or give her a, a ride? No, I, I think that... I you know, I cannot speak for her. Yeah. I, I wasn't I can there, only that's tell all I'm you, saying. I, I'm saying... I wasn't there, I didn't see, I wasn't... We get it. You don't listen to social media, you don't watch social media, but... Please, for the love of God, stop with this nonsense. I didn't see. I didn't do. Maybe see this. Maybe go back and watch that podcast. Maybe. Maybe check out a clip. So if you want to lie, you have a context to lie on. You have some evidence that you can maybe, you know, work with so you can paint a different narrative. My guy, what is this nonsense? And then you see how he tried to interject and say, because I tried to offer a lift, a ride. <laughs> We've all tried it, innit? We've all tried those lies. No, I didn't. I, I wasn't. I promise I wasn't looking at a bum. I was checking out her trainers. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I ended up here. I just tripped and fell into her pussy, mate. <laughs> oh, my God. I can only tell you what was said on that particular podcast. And, and again, if that's how she feels, she's valid to feel like that. And I'm telling you, that's, that never happened. Okay. That's a situation you would have to talk to her about. But I'm going to get back. Oh, Brendan, why would you just look? I find it very hard to believe because if you listen to that Trash Tuesday podcast, they were talking about crappy men in the lead up to that conversation about the truck walk and leading up to Kalila revealing what she revealed. And, you know, men basically getting the wrong impression or thinking you're only down for one thing or something. I remember it. We listened to it before. And that story came from the depths of Annie's soul. She seemed really irate. That's not like a woman's story that you just kind of, you know, misremember or you're not really sure on the facts of it. And if I'm not mistaken, Annie's also sober. She's a former addict. So she's clean as a judge, just drinks water and maybe root beer. So I don't think she misremembered it. She definitely remembered that story, that instance, and kind of retold it in painstaking detail. So I don't think he has a liar. I just don't think so. And if I have to choose one person who lies and one person who doesn't, I don't know Annie as well as I know Brenda through content, but I would assume Annie would be the person I would say isn't the liar. So to come out and say it didn't happen is just crazy because it just opens yourself up to more. Don't you want this stuff to be over? Why not just say you did it, even if you don't believe you did it, so you can just move on with your life? Why would you categorically say it didn't happen? which is just an going to antagonize her more. It's going to make her feel like she was calling her a liar. And then she's going to come out and go off the handle. Because isn't that what's going to happen? Like, why would you do that to yourself? But I guess the problem here is, I have the feeling that most likely, this is the one breaking point in his relationship probably. Because he's really hung up on making sure this is corrected, like that didn't happen, that didn't happen. So I, this might be the real deciding fact. So this might be the one thing that the Mexican might have said to him or his wife has said to him, hey, if this is true, I'm leaving. So he has to keep up this facade that it didn't happen because if he admits it, then it's all better off. But it's also interesting how no one here is mentioning the flipping stream that happened where the whole thing that, you know, again, something that that, that transpired in the run up of the stuff, that alleged passing of a note to the random on live stream. What was that about them? <laughs> was she an intern? Was she somebody that, what was he, what was he doing? Sending her the email address of t K so she could send in her CV. <laughs> you gotta love this guy, man to the podcast itself yeah the what was said was that there was a guy he was unfunny i came back with oh that's a big clue and that's something about a peach emoji and then you, but my thing with that clive do you think that's nice oh no mm. but i didn't say your name but it's it's hang on one second brendan let me tell let me ask you this mm -hmm. If we're having this discussion about something that happened in the past and we're having a giggly little girl talk, mm -hmm. 
Where is the crime in that? There's no crime. You can do whatever you want. Right. I have no issue with that. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no issue with it. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, is that, is that nice? That's all. I I'm have saying. gone to you and said, if I could go back, if I had known that. Is it nice to slide into someone's DMs who you consider to be a friend in comedy when you know their relationship, when you know you're in one? Is it nice to allegedly offer one a truck walk, which maybe insinuates that you want them to gluck gluck 2,000 you in the front seat of your brand new white truck in the middle of a car park in front of everybody else? Is that really nice? This guy, bro, imagine the neck to say that. Is it nice, you know? Fucking hell. That a tiny little giggly girl talk was going to spiral into this, I would have wired my mouth shut. But in my heart of hearts, while you may think it's not nice, and now I admit, not the nicest thing to say, it was just an anecdote. Sure. So that was I didn't think much of it uh -huh. on saying that because hitting on someone is just simply not a cancelable offense. That was my justification for it. Who the fuck cares who hits on who seven years ago? I had fake tits then. They were shiny. You liked them. You DM'd me. You said sorry. Fuck it. Right? I'm with you. Okay. I own that. Yeah. Good. However, the outcome of that is that people assumed that we were talking about you and went ham on Reddit. And you received a, a lot of... Your team alerted you to the video and the Reddit chatter. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming leaving out the part where we didn't say your name. Mm -hmm. Correct. Can I move on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On February 23rd, you text Bobby a video clip some dude put together, a random YouTuber, um, of that same Trash Tuesday episode, mm -hmm. talking about being us being hit on by a comic. Mm -hmm. But with the clickbait title, Bobby Lee's wife confirmed Shab tried cheating on his wife with her. Mm -hmm. You text Bobby saying, you've been harassed for six years straight, and you've had it, and you're finally going, this is quote, this is a direct quote, mm -hmm. You're finally going after anyone who harasses you online, including right. comics, that you have spent half a million dollars on monster lawyers, and that you have friends in dark places who are going to get the job done. Mm -hmm. To which Bobby says, okay, I'll talk to Kalila. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So quite clearly, Unix puts together a video that he usually does, similar to what I do, but with a much crazier clickbait title on it and clearly goes right to the jugular with it like he always does of his content talking about these guys because they you know he he wouldn't exist i wouldn't exist if these guys didn't speak so brazenly about the stuff that they do or be so dumb with some of the stuff that they say that video clip was a him and an analyzing what happened on trash two days so it's just him basically you know basically connecting the dots and maybe figuring out it might be Brendan that they were talking about in terms of who that guy was. Brendan's response to seeing that video is to silence Uniques by suing him and it's to also threaten Bobby Lee with that video by texting it to him and getting him to get, quote-unquote, his bitch in line in Kalila. <sighs> the outcome of that, Bobby shares that screenshot with me I ask Bobby if he thinks this is a direct threat towards me. He says, I don't know. I share that information with Annie and Esther, and they're like, what the fuck? Why such an extreme response? Where is this big need to silence us coming from? It was a small little story, so we thought. Exactly. February 24th, I'm in New York doing Flagrant 2. You call Bobby and you tell him to tell me that you want the Trash Tuesday girls to announce on the next episode of Trash Tuesday that, hey, guys, it wasn't Brendan Schaub we were talking about. Collectively, we're like, oh, my God, that's going to make it worse for him. That's just not a good look for him. If we say, hey, guys, that's who Hold we on, I text Bobby that. No, you... no, I didn't text Bobby that. Me and Bobby spoke on the phone. Spoke on the and phone. he said I didn't. He said I said, can I said, dude. I'm getting a lot of shit about this. I'm married with kids. Mm. I said, it's not good. I said, in Bobby's exact words, were, I'll fix this. Whatever that means. Okay, so we didn't, we didn't confirm nor deny. Um, we figured it would die out in a week anyway. Agree. That's um, on March 3rd, 
you text Bobby asking if he's handled the quote unquote Kalila shit yet because you're still getting negative comments. Mm -hmm. In this text chain, you said, I don't want to have to get nasty with her, but if I have no choice, Jesus Christ. this is all direct quotes, I can def play that game. And this was referring to the months that Bobby and I were in an open relationship, thinking that that was somehow going to directly hurt me. Yeah, I, I, obviously, obviously, I mean, it's like, you know, the open. Oh, do you hear all these threats and these fucking manipulation tactics and stuff like, uh, again, let's be charitable to Brendan. Let's be charitable, right? Let's extend him an olive branch. Is it embarrassing to have a slight dalliance and dropping of the guard that you had and lust and thirst for a comedic friend's wife girlfriend at the time and siding into dm's occurrence is that embarrassing yes would you want that to be brought up on the podcast again randomly out of the blue seven years later when you are one of the most hated on comedians in the scene no it's not something that you'd like not something that you would encourage and not something you'd be happy with i understand but surely all of this skullduggery in the background just hurts you it makes you look worse it makes the situation worse because number one now we all know that even though you try to act like you not, you don't see nothing and you're bigger than everything and you're the big billy bulldog over here you are clearly get hurt by people leaving you mad comments you clearly get hurt when people say mean things about you you clearly get hurt when people make fun of you and you clearly really worry about how people see and view and talk about you so all those things are now going to be things that people are going to be constantly attacking you on more because they're going to know they can get a riot out of you because they know behind the scenes you're crying into your whiskey cup about it. And again, is it embarrassing? Yes. Is it something to spend all this time on? Employing people and hiring, well, flipping BlackRock operatives to come and flipping threaten people and ex you want to expose their relationship status and what they get up to in the bedroom. Like, come on, bro really maybe focus on maybe not creeping into people's dms first maybe try that maybe give yourself a social media detox go on a yeah go on a go on a social media cleanse put your phone in the vault somewhere you know commit to that commit to maybe having six months of not having any flirtatious communication with anyone that isn't your wife for, for a few months see how that goes reset yourself that way instead of chasing people around and getting them to make statements about you and what you did not and did not he's just uh, i don't know if he's just dumb or if he was just really panicking that he was going to lose everything but this is such a bad way to handle this man open relationship you and i we we were that's not for the was for the we even for talked about it's not for the public consumption right because it was delicate it was a delicate thing he was right? also we were going back on drugs there's so many different There's things. so many different elements, elements to it. Elements to it, right? There, it was a dark time. It was very fragile. So we it was, had, you know, we actually it, broke up for a while. Yeah. In so, fact, Schultz knew that because when Schultz came oh, here, we yeah, were yeah. broken up. Yeah. So, and you guys did or didn't talk about this on the pod? We never we, talked. We, this, the, the first time we've ever talked about it out loud was H three, which is a couple of days ago. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, and um, it's something that I was gonna die to the grave. Hello. By the way, hello. Schultz is a piece of shit. A funny one, but a piece of shit. If I'm not mistaken, when they went on um, Flagrant 2, Bobby Lee and Kalila, he was really pushing and joking about them getting married and how the wedding would be and all this sort of stuff. He was really playing with that a lot when they were there, clearly. And he obviously knew that they were broken up. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but anyway. You know, and so that's and again, what she's this would have all been solved if you and I would have talked direct like we did a week ago with your timeline. But before you go on, though, yeah. real quick, can I say this? Yeah. The information I got, that open relationship, uh, th that's not a, it's not like anybody did a crime. That That's not really breaking news. I can't hold that over your head. The other information you gave me was, is, is the, the bad one, which I don't want to get into. Okay. Okay. That I don't want to bring up. That's Wait. not fair to you guys or, or anybody. We can get into that. Wait, what is that other thing? Yeah, we can get into that. The other. Wait, hold on. Let me. Let me okay. actually yeah. probably let let's assume that it's the same old narrative of me being a gold digger and stealing money from Bobby. 
I mean, is it we, within we, those lines? We talked about it. Yeah, you and so, I had spoke about this, and you told me. The oh yes, yeah. so, I mean, let's yes. let's be real. That is an old, tired story. Bobby, call your accountants. Okay, here's the truth of the matter. Okay, I don't really need. To I, know, I, 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 don't, I, I don't. I don't. I don't need it. Wow. Oh, oh my god. I can't believe what's happening right now. He's fully involved in their relationship. <laughs> he must really, really like Kalila. Kalila must look really amazing in person, more so than she does on pictures. And she must have a really banging personality or something. Because he's clearly in love with this woman. Clearly, he's in love with her, bro. Why does he care this much about all this stuff? Because if this was just like, deep, again, I don't condone this sort of stuff, but it does happen, right? You shouldn't be trying to hook up with your friend's girls, right? I don't need to say this out loud, but you shouldn't be doing that. It should be something that you try not to do. But if it does happen, usually it's because you're just thirsty. They might have a great rack on them. They might have a great bum. They might be really petite. They might be really tall. It might be just something that kind of tickles your fancy. They're redhead, they're mixed race, they're black, they're Asian. There's something about them that just sends you googly googly. But it's usually something that you would categorize or put in the first bucket category. Not like I'm trying to leave my girl to hook up with my best friend girl. Not re not usually. It's just a weird, oh, you just want to know how it feels. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. A bit creepy, but that's what you're thinking usually. It's not deeper than that. But all this stuff he's building up as a case file is like he's trying to build a case to present to Kalila to convince her to leave Bobby to get with him <laughs> and be a step that stepmom to his kids or something. This is what it sounds like. Why does he care about this stuff? Like I don't I don't even I don't even know this is true, this narrative about her, you know, Kalila being a gold digger and taking all Bobby these money, but even as a layman watching him from afar, that clearly isn't true because she's clearly been a positive to his life again no you know what let me let me retract that even if what brendan is suggesting is true and she is some sort of conniving you know long game flipping gold digger who sits there for 10 years and plots with you plots about you in the background and all the, and all the while she's skimming money off the top or whatever even if that is true she has still been a net positive for bobby lee and his career overall even if she's stealing money i would think he would still say he was glad he met her because he's been able to you know build up the tiger belly podcast to be self-sufficient they probably make loads of money on that he went on then to use that platform to do other things that maybe gave him confidence to do the other podcast that he's doing he's even discussed in recent years seriously considering recording a comedy special i don't think he would have done that if it wasn't for kalila yes the you know the sobriety thing hasn't really worked out as he would have hoped but still you know he's back he's back doing what he needs to do to get that right but what is this talk i don't get it i think brendan's in love with kalila mate i think he's in love with her you know this i i i, I, I know it's it, I, 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 here, uh, okay the, the the only reason i'm here was to bring up the red thing and show you guys information right, i have carry on and move if yeah, just keep end. going okay i'm almost done i promise we're already in March, okay? Oh, wait, April. All right, all right. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty good. Only a few more. <laughs> okay, so we ended with, I don't want get, to have to get nasty with her, but mm -hmm. if I have to, I'll play that game. Mm -hmm. You were alluding to stuff you heard from somebody about me being a gold-digging whore and um, um, the other stuff, mm -hmm. the, the, the cheating, right, mm -hmm. allegedly. Um, Bobby says, calls you and says, Hey, dude, I saw, you know, that's when you guys discussed. I saw those text messages years ago. This is all when I was, and you did hit on her. She will not be saying your name anymore, but you need to let this go, right? You guys agreed to that. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, in the next coming weeks, however, I'm starting to see screenshots on Instagram of DMs of um, your cute little friend, Mark, confirming that you wanted to expose me. Is that correct? I didn't see them. You, I know, you but would we, know. But we, I uh, talked to you uh, about Mark. You, told you, me you see, he's such... <sighs> so Mark, I'm assuming, is BGL, right? Big Gay Lion, the freak that we were watching before. He was trying to, you know, Lucian Freud his way into, you know, convincing Brendan that he was his main bottom guy. 
say what you want about the guy, but at least he's loyal. He's Mike, you know, he's 40 year old man who's, you know, deciding to have best friends in that, at that age and ride for them in this way. But still, he's loyal. He's clearly somebody that's found a friend, he believes, and a true brother in Brendan. And he's trying his best. Yeah, Mr. D3. <laughs> he's trying his best to show his worth, right? But it's clearly also coming, I think, from a real place. He clearly loves him. And he's clearly wants to be his friend. And he's doing what most friends will do in trying to protect his boy. He flew out of the window and he's trying to do everything he can to protect him. And for some reason, he was dumb enough to share some of the behind the scenes stuff with somebody on DMs. Now, that might have been like a chess move because he knew if he did that, and it, he knew if he did that, most likely it would get screenshot and get shared in the Fire and the Kiss subreddit, which would then eventually get out and in front of Kalila and Bobby. And maybe they might inadvertently back off. And then if it did work, he could say, aha, uh -huh, I was a mastermind behind it. But he did it. Bad move and he did it. She brings it up and instead of him defending the guy or offering something, he pretends like he didn't see it. It wasn't something that he endorsed and immediately distanced himself from BGL, even though he went out of his way to defend him. These guys will die on their sword for the guy, but he at the first instance will quickly give them the stiff arm where they suggested that he was part of it too. Fuck me. That, yeah, you confirmed I, it with him. It, well, no, I went to Mark and said, dude, you're making things way worse for me. Okay. Because he's trying to defend me. I went, you're not defending me. You're making it Got worse, it. giving her f fuel. And me and her are talking. You don't need to do this. On April 13th, during a Trash Tuesday live stream show, the girls and I talk about someone threatening to possibly sue us. There was a Dumois article that said there's um, a girl podcast that is going, to a uh, going through a lot of internal trouble because a much bigger podcaster is trying to sue them um we assumed it was us also based on the text that um bobby had showed me about you ha spending half a million dollars on monster lawyers i assumed oh of course it had to be us well hold on so there's an article where a big podcaster is suing three and girls Dumois. well it's on dumois right George? what's that dumois is a site that um, picks up like insider information about either like celebrities and whatnot I think they picked up on the drama of um, just the whole Trash Tuesday podcast. And and in in the art, they don't say any names or anything. No. Okay. But they yeah. they kind of add like little hints and stuff mm. along the way. They give you enough information to sort of yeah. Anyways, mm. um, so during that live show, the girls and I love how he's pretending he doesn't know what Dumois is. I love how he's pretending he doesn't know. You live in LA, mate. That's somebody that whoever does it is definitely somebody that lives in LA and gets fed information. And if in case some of you guys don't know what it is, it's an anonymous Instagram profile where people send in, um, you know, I just saw this celebrity here. Um, I, what you call it? Yeah, I just saw this celebrity here. I know this. I overheard this. Whatever it may be, like like celebrity sightseeing sort of stuff. It's it's pretty interesting in that regard. But it's a bit of a lame thing to watch again and again. But the fact that he's trying to pretend like he doesn't know what it is is just hilarious. But anyway, big up the super chat. I just saw this here. Let me see if I can get it up here on my screen. Um, big up you. Appreciate you. Hope I can get it up here before it disappears. Yeah, big up the super chat from. Jay Santos, first time here, good stuff subbed. Ah, uh, oh, brilliant. Thank you so much for the kind words, Jay Santos. Really do appreciate it. I do my best. I do my best. I talk about someone possibly threatening to sue us. We were really under the belief Based that you were off that article. No. Two things. The screenshot that you had sent Bobby that you're coming after everyone, mm -hmm. spending half a million dollars on mm -hmm. monster lawyers, that so you have friends in dark places. Mm -hmm that you were um and then that the article us. added to that you're saying correct gotcha um and then i add <laughs> he's, I add he's such a redact what was the point of that clarification you said you was going to sue them on text and then that story comes out and do more it's like one plus one sometimes equals two <laughs> got you uh, show i said this particular someone thinks he has dirt on me and i say go ahead and expose me and, and i wasn't very nice and he calls this person this someone unfunny mm -hmm. and i said and i called that person a little bitch 
and the outcome of, the outcome of that, it fueled more harassment towards you on Reddit mm -hmm. after the live show. Mm -hmm. On April 18th. But you guys were upset off that article and then the prior talks with Bobby. That's what fueled that. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So we're getting this Makes idea sense. that you simply aren't going to let it go. Um, that's the feeling we're getting. That you're having. Okay. Validated. Right. Um, I will skip April 18 because it involves a DM from Schultz, and I don't want to drag him into this. Okay. On April 24, you text Bobby the following. I got a call from a journalist. Not good for you. What we talked about earlier. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You and Callan then follow up with a phone call to threaten to, well, just Callan physically hurt him to end his career, accusing him <laughs> of being the mastermind. Did Callan, was it physical threat, Bobby? I, I don't it wasn't a physical threat. I remember I was like, no, Jesus It's not a physical Christ. threat, but it's like, it, it's like if, I, you know what I mean, if I wasn't such a big a name. Uh, uh, no, if I wasn't such a good guy or whatever, you know what I mean, if I was a different person, you know, it wasn't really a physical threat. It was more but like. you felt threatened. Yeah, I mean, in in in, in the tone and it was a very aggressive. It's very aggressive. So, um, yeah, I found it to be physically threatening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, you were on the phone call, mate. Why are you acting like you don't know what was said or what kind of level of threat was being threatened over the phone? And Brian wouldn't be flying off the handle like that if you weren't complaining or crying to him, you know, pillow talking and making it seem as if this is going to be the end of your li of your life that this got out here. That's what I'm saying. B BGL went out of his way to defend the guy, you know, in a weird way by sharing those, by, you know, talking to a fan via DMs and hoping it would get shared. I'm assuming he did it that way. Maybe he didn't. Who knows? And he thought he was talking to somebody in confidence. I doubt it. But let's just let's just, just extend the olive branch to him. Immediately when his name gets brought up, he strong arms him. Nah, nothing to do with me. They talk about Brian flying off the window and threatening Bobby Lee, who he's known for nearly 30 years, he immediately goes, nah, I don't, nah, nah. Really? That was fucked up, man. I didn't know that happened. Crazy, man. Whoa. I was like, whoa, man. How's he saying that? It's like, have some honor with your friends, bro. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so that accusation to end his career of him being, of Bobby being the mastermind behind the six years of Reddit harassment mm -hmm. towards you, Shab. Mm -hmm. Bobby calls me from Tulsa. He's shell-shocked. He's upset. He gave you my number, or did no, you give no, me? No, 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 no. He calls me. I'll we'll get to okay. that. So he calls me. He's clearly upset. Then that upsets me. The outcome is I ask Bobby for your number. I text you the following. This is exact text. Hi, Brendan. It's Kalila. Bobby just told me you and Callan threatened him. I'm failing to understand the need for such a big reaction to something so small. Please stop with the threats to sue or create false stories to expose Bobby and I. I am available to chat if you'd like. To which you agreed, mm -hmm. and we chat. The first time we talked was not really a talk; it we was more like of ten minutes of screaming. Yes, um, we and called each other names mm -hmm. for about ten minutes. You're very good. At um, that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I will say I, I I dug deep there. I dug <laughs> through my my arsenal. Very thank you. I could hear it from Oklahoma, <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah. crazy. Thank you. <laughs> This is the story that I got from you during the screaming match, is that you told me that the feds had been investigating a video of child abuse on the subreddit, correct? Uh, I, guess, I guess you call it fed. It, it's, it goes beyond my team because of the criminal they, action. Uh, the criminal action. The criminal so, activity, yes. Okay. I, you, you said feds, but maybe that's not what you meant. It's probably you meant someone higher up. Correct, yeah. Okay. Feds would be a bad term. Okay. Um, a video of child abuse on the subreddit mm -hmm. where they noticed a barrage of comments linked to one IP address linked to a computer from my home. Correct. As they continued to investigate, they were able to retrieve 300 pages of evidence that mm -hmm. either Bobby or I were responsible for the six years of subreddit harassment towards you, Joanna, and your kids, mm -hmm. right? All six years to... This is the first time the Mexican Joanna has been mentioned, this entire issue. Bless that lady, man. The things she has to put up with. God damn it. One home address. I said, 
but Shab, we've only lived here for two and a half. How is this possible? Then I said, let me get this straight. You're telling me that while investigating a child abuse case, the feds were like, yeah, let's put this beaten baby case to rest and pursue Shab's online harassment instead. I mocked you. The argument was super heated. Mm -hmm. I said, Brendan, you can audit my asshole, my pet's asshole, my mom's asshole, and you'll find nothing. Oh. Plus, why are you doing all of this? <laughs> Over a story I told on my show, I never said your name. You said, that can't be true. I said, roll the tapes, listen, go back, open your ears and hear it for yourself. That was April 24th. On April 25, in the wee hours of the morning, you text me and you said you haven't been able to sleep. Mm -hmm. You ask to talk. This time, it's not heated. It's a very productive mm -mm. conversation. Way better. You apologize mm -hmm. profusely. You say you're embarrassed mm -hmm. after realizing we actually did never said your name on Trash Tuesday. We come to the agreement that I will not be mentioning or alluding to you in any way. Moving. So you're telling me the entire time he's arguing and denying and threatening and intimidating and alluding and all this nonsense. He didn't sit down and just listen to the whole episode. This thing that he feels like is monumental, that's going to do irrevocable or irreversible damage to his career, that might harm his ability to look after his children, that might ruin his relationship with his wife. He didn't have the flipping wherewithal to sit down and just think, maybe I should listen to this. God almighty, man, this guy is redacted. Moving forward. Um, but I still demand that you send me the 300 pages of evidence against me, Bobby, and my company because mm -hmm. that is a serious allegation. I have spent the last eight years building this company. And Tell I'll be damned it. if anyone, you know, if, if my company is associated to a stain like that. That's horrible. And horrible. if any of my guys were to do that, they would be gone yesterday. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, um, you agree. You say your guys are on it. You're going to send me the 300 pages of evidence. Yep. Okay. In the following two weeks, I text you on four different occasions asking for those 300 pages. Mm -hmm. I tell you that I don't want my business <sighs> to be associated with any of this. I patch you to my producers, George and Gilbert, who both tell you that we want to get to the bottom of this. We want to help you. Mm -hmm. This is serious. I felt like you long played us and you say you're busy and nothing is ever sent to us. Mm -hmm. On May 2nd, finally got to May. We're in May. Let's go. On May 2nd, you were on flagrant two being very complimentary to me. Meanwhile, on this day, I was hearing from our friends in common that you had flown to Austin to speak to Rogan about the situation. No, that you were telling hold on let me finish this and you oh the exposing so everything that people have been saying on that honestly the fire and the kids subreddit they are absolute nostradamus over there they always say whenever something happens or bad whether to brendan that he runs to daddy rogan and goes to complain and now we know it's true he flew to austin of course to promote his special but also to have Daddy Rogan's advice on this issue that he's going through. God almighty. Rogan's probably sitting there thinking, why? This is why I left LA. <laughs> oh, Kalala's just, oh, glad she's there, man. I'm glad she's there. You can defend okay, yourself. That you were telling Rogan, Whitney, Schultz, anyone with an ear, slanderous things about me, that okay. I was a gold digging whore, Not stealing good. money from Bobby because God forbid I make my own money, that you hired a private investigator who was able to incriminate me for six years of Reddit harassment towards you, Joanna, and your kids, and just overall assassinating, assassinating my character. At this point, I decide that our previous deal to not talk about each other on the podcast was off. So I know you understood it to be, hey, I'm on flagrant. I said nice things about you. I was getting different I would have said those no matter day. what. At, okay, that's May 2nd. May 6th, Bobby and I go on H3. Ethan brings you up. I feel justified, very justified at this point to talk about you. Bobby talks about the bullying. I text you after the show. I give you the heads up. 
I say, Brendan, this is what was talked about on H3. Mm -hmm. Later that afternoon, Callan calls to apologize to Bobby for the bullying, threats, etc. I'm curious to see, will he deny what she said, though? Let's, let's, let's keep an eye on that. Will he deny that? Will he deny that? What I'm thinking is that, will he deny the fact that she said in the same like bef yeah in the same month that you said we should squash it and we were cool and we shouldn't speak about it anymore we had a constructive conversation you on the se on the other side of your mouth you were flying off to austin and basically bad mouth me to anybody that would listen to you let's see if he actually keeps that same energy or oh, before we do that we have a super chat here i think i heard a little alert do we have one well i miss it? yeah i did from um Eggy Mule, he says, for one pound seventy nine. Thank you, appreciate you. And he says the following: BGL D three helmet, shots is lizard. That is all. <laughs> Fair enough. D three helmet. BGL D three helmet is a good is a good way to refer to somebody. But anyway, let's let's see. But big up for the super chat. I appreciate you, brother. Hey, will you clear uh, bullying? Meaning, um, define bullying for me. <laughs> like what? Like Callan, like Callan bullied you, Bobby. Um, the phone, that phone call. That phone call. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm he, just saying. Was that? Ah, uh, now I get why the BGO fucking reading the Wikipedia definition of bullying comes from. He must have had a conversation with Brendan too, because Brendan's a bit of a sieve in that way. As soon as you tell him something, he just repeats it. You know what I mean, so clearly they had some sort of conversation about bullying. <sighs> Does that seem bullying to you? That, that phone call? call? Yes. I didn't know if you and Ke if Callan called you like every other day doing this. No, 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 no. no. Which I highly doubt. Because when I heard bull, you know, no, no I mean bullying is from that call. Uh huh. I mean, okay. I mean, even with Callan's phone call Friday, um, <sighs> his can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, the apology phone call. I love the LA way. Bullying only counts if it's coming towards Brendan and it only counts if it's done more than once. If you don't bully somebody more than once, it's not bullying. It's just being stern. <laughs> it's just being direct. It's just backing your boy. <laughs> oh, these guys are insufferable, man. Insufferable. It, it was still... There was a thread of, but still, you know, he was like, I'm so sorry. I should have done it better. You're my friend, this and that. But there's still somebody on your team. You know what I mean? And at that point, I was just like, oh, and I, have it, I also have it on excellent authority mm -hmm. that we're not the first people he has threatened that whole Reddit thing about. Brian? He has used that excuse on multiple people. I know you're responsible for Reddit. So when I heard that. Talon has? Oh, yeah. So I don't know if I believe that. Okay. I'm just saying we wouldn't be the first. Who said that. I believe I believe Kyla. I believe Kyla because I do remember because that's the same thing he tried to say about Chris Lea, isn't it? Remember when remember when Chris Lea happened remember that thing happened to Chris Lea and he got taken down for allegedly, you know, creeping in underage girls' DMs or whatnot. Brent Brian went out of his way to delete all evidence of Chris Lea from his Instagram page. And then he made up this that shit lie about oh he was afraid his daughters were gonna see stuff and people on reddit forums and whatnot he just used reddit as an excuse to say that's why he deleted pictures of crystal on his profile when the real reason was because he was afraid of getting cancelled by being associated with crystal did did crystalia not chris didler i was about to say chris didler but yeah <laughs> he was afraid of being associated with him, so he deleted the pictures but then as karma would have it a few weeks later he then gets accused of rape which I mean, it is what it is, and that the game is the game. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Brian's not privy to that. Brian, you know what? A, May May seventh, which is the day after H three, you is asked that Saturday. Saturday, yeah. you asked to talk. You apologize for everything. You say you're ready to take full responsibility. You ask to be on the podcast. I say yes, and here we are. We had a discussion, right? About I said, how how do we end this? Because this isn't good for Correct. anyone. I said, should I go on the podcast and air it out? And right. then we came to an agreement to, because I, I didn't think coming on here was a great idea, you know, because just because I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. you know? Hey, yeah. good instinct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you it's know, I idea. haven't, I didn't sleep well last night and it's been, you know. Big up the producer in the background taking a shot there at him. I love that because this has been a terrible podcast for Brendan, an absolute car crash 
an absolute car crash. It's made him look worse than he ever had ever had imagined he'd probably looked. This is the bad, worst idea ever. I mean, you have to understand that, um, you know, I live with Kalila and um, she's the love of my life. And um, for the last couple of months, you know, I mean, even even when I mean, it was terrible when I was using and then when I got sober again, it's been very terrible in the house seeing her go through. I mean, because, you know, I mean, we all know you know, um, that we get harassed, you know what I mean, and things said about us on the internet, but mine's with her as... Mine's different, Bubba. Huh? Mine's I know it is, you know but what? I'm just saying... I different. would say mine is on par with yours. Mm -mm. I'll share with you what I do. <laughs> okay, but I, 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 I don't want to do it to a tit for cat. I don't want to do it to a tit for fat. Oh, no, we don't I, want it. That but one I'm, I will win. All right, I know you would. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying, though, is, is that, um, you know, to witness her every day go through deep... You know what I mean? Emotional, you know what I mean? Episodes. Oh, it's been awful. You know what I mean? And it's really, ter it's been very terrible for me. You I know? think I, I felt like such a small fry in this because obviously, you know, when I had heard that you had gone to Rogan and other people, I thought, like, how did it get from giggly girl talk? To hear. Mm -hmm. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I talk about yeah. that? Okay, though? so let's. Can go, I? Go. Can I go? Defend. Yeah, please. Defend. Can I go? Where's your timeline? Where's, <laughs> where's your piece of yeah. paper? Dude? Da, 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 timeline with Brendan Shaw. <laughs> One time only. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Um, all this stems back to all, all that stuff. It's all a, a, a place of, of fear. It's all a place of fear because when we talk about Reddit and that stuff and the harassment, promise you, mine's different. The, I know I look tough and all that. That stuff hurts my feelings. That's why I'm not on social media. It's not because I think I'm better than anybody or anything like that. That stuff is horrendous. Horrendous. I believe you. Horrendous. Mm -hmm. So when that team looks into it and I get notified that it's Tiger Belly, I'm so upset. Now, you guys are saying you have nothing to do with it, right? So, but at the time, I was so upset because you've always been nice to me. Oh, you've always been nice to me. We don't know each other, but you've always been nice to me. So I was so upset because if it's someone random, that's whatever, you know, that, that's what they're going to do. But if somebody that I know, I was so upset. I expect it from somebody I don't know, but somebody that I assume I know, that's where this stems from. The anger, I cannot emphasize how upset I was and hurt and deeply hurt because, it, it, again, I don't think you guys have anything to do with it. But where is but this hold on, But hold on, Clyde. I, ha I have the proof. Here, here's the thing. Did you, where's your briefcase? And, and I, I don't need a briefcase. <laughs> I don't need a briefcase. I wish I could laugh at that. Yeah. I don't have a briefcase. I have it all on my phone. Okay. The reason I can't send it to you is because of the ongoing investigation. I can't. Okay. On the uh, investigation for the b child abuse thing? For There's six counts on there that you're talking about pedophiles. You're talking about horrible shit. Mm. Okay. It's bigger than me. But the, they're gonna. Th that's gonna be dealt with. My thing for you, do whatever you want with this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's let's just get this right. So this three hundred page document he's talking about is this is this the reason why he's suing Uniques? So when we all assumed he was suing Uniques because of the video he uploaded, where he suggested. Or he he you know, he put the dots together that maybe Brendan was handing a note to some mysterious girl in the crowd of that um boxing thing that he did the live stream with Mike Tyson. I just assumed the reason why he got sued was because he was putting out too much of Brendan's business. But is it the real reason he's suing Unique because he's alluding that he might be a child abuser or something? What? And what does that have to do with Bobby and Kalila anyway? He's 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 what well, he's a, he's now alluding that it's not Uniques who's part who's the owner of that Reddit account. It's actually Bobby and Kalina. I don't understand this. I really don't get the connection. With it. I don't understand this. I really don't. Whatever you want, I I'm good, man. Okay. It's horrible, and I want to squash between us. Do what? And let me get this out, Bob. I know you want to talk. I'll show you the stuff that I have. You guys figure out what you want to do with it. This is what's interesting. Again, I don't think it's you Will guys. Will you show me now? I'll show you that when we'll we got blur, the, We'll uh, blur this uh, off. We, just, what, we want to know because, like, we, I'll show you after the show. I want the let, audience let me to get, think let, that let me, you actually showed us something you never did. Well, yeah, I can. I can show it to you. Here's here's the thing. 
this is what's interesting to me. Explain this however you want. When I notified you guys of the harassment and, and going back to Tiger Belly, that account stopped posting, took the Tiger Belly email off, and changed it. It's never posted again. Do you know how Reddit works? No. So you seem to have... <laughs> one of the best, one of the best, one of the best bits... One of the best sound bites to come out of this whole thing is that entire exchange. Do you know how Reddit works? Pause. No. After he's mumbling and stuttering his way through, somebody has an account and they're liking pedophilic stuff and they're beating their autistic kid on live stream. I don't know what that has to do with him cheating or, or sliding into people's DMs, by the way. But still, he's stuttering and sluffering his way all through it with these nicotine patches probably hanging from his bottom lip. And then she's like, do you know how Reddit works? No. So you're doing all of this, grabbing all this evidence, putting together this mad conspiracy, and you have no idea how Reddit works. This reminds me of those conversations people have with flat earthers. Do you know what I mean? Are you familiar with the law of physics? No. <laughs> then what are we talking about? <laughs> Very clear convictions about this alleged occurrence from my company, all the while not really knowing how reddit posting works brendan so that's a little bit well this this team note pr i promise you this team note okay well, I, 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 but, 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 we've but. been asking you to speak with this team and uh, uh, here here's what i have to say about this from my end here from my end it looked foolish for you to be this fragile over something some three girls said on a podcast it looked foolish so in my end the way i understand it is we need to come up with a bigger story about Kalila to incriminate so that my reaction to that Trash Tuesday talk doesn't seem insane. No, that's how it. I receive it. You're giving it. me too much credit. You're giving me too much credit. It, You're giving me way too much credit. I, I don't you, think. You think I'd want to. Again, I don't want this drama. I've been harassed for six years, guys. Six years. But I think that it makes sense that someone who has been harassed for six years would feel like he's on the back foot and would swing in this way. It makes sense to me. I would only exactly. swing if they gave because, if this because he wants to be the victim. He wants to be the victim. This is the apropos time to stand behind victimhood and cry foul play and say how it's affecting you and it's bullying and I'm emotional and I'm a big guy even though I'm a tough guy and I'm a hell's angel and all this nonsense it hurts me too. It's like, what are you talking about? One moment he's threatening people and saying, if you come to me, I'm going... Didn't he, didn't he do that recently? He started threatening people. I've got a skill set. Name the warders. That's where that whole meme came from, to name the warders. He's threatening people with violence. He breaks fucking Chin's neck to the point where he might require surgery. Doesn't pay for it, by the way, but still great guy, beast of a guy. And now suddenly he's now victim man. Now he's victim man. And conveniently, his crack team of Black Rock um, flipping uh, agents that he's got, right? Former fucking, what would you call them? Former fucking CIA agents. I now presented to him a case where he's alleging that Bobby Lee is what? Harboring fucking child abusers. And he's on his team of people that he works with. And he's going to their studio and not willing to share the information, but accusing people that are producing that show of being people who are behind it. This team who has nothing to do with comedy, don't know you guys, didn't show me this stuff. Okay, okay. Can I say something? Yes. All right. Number one, I don't need to see it. I don't personally need to see it because I know that I have nothing to do with it. You, know? you don't. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Number you're one. Right. Um, you, you're saying that you know me, right? If you did know me, right, you already know, you would already know that I had nothing to do with it because of the fact that when all this thing happened, Delia called me laughing, right? And Delia goes... You don't even know how to. You don't own a computer. He answers True. the phone with his iPad. He, he goes, "You don't. You don't know how to get on your email." And mm -hmm. I, and he was laughing. I go, "I know." In fact, I've had calls from everybody, right? Huge names in the podcast room, laughing like what? He, they apparently don't know who you are and how you operate. He's literally fe right? missing fingers. Yeah, yeah, I'm missing fingers. My we're, point we're is, we're not saying it's it's not Bob. I understand that, but. 
But you understand that because of the call a week and a half ago with you and Brian, right? You said that it was me in the beginning. I said your name is on the account, Bobby. Right, right. And then and eventually, in that same call, we said it's eventually not- through the conversations after saying I don't own a computer, this and that, and and. And defending myself, this and that. Me. What? And then it said it was me. No, I, I, I don't know. I don't remember. But what I'm saying is, is that um, we didn't say you particularly. In the beginning, you did, and 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 as as I as I defended myself and saying I don't own a computer, this and that. Then you guys started going, oh, maybe it wasn't you. Well, it's somebody on your team, right? So, you know, I honestly believe full heartedly that I, I don't know what you have there, but I know that. In terms of these two ding dongs, right? They have nothing to do with it. Why? You have to ask yourself this question: What is the motive? What? Why I, would we do that? I have no clue. When, when, I, literally, yeah, yeah. like, what is the motive? There is it? no reason behind it. I. Well, what's have the reason all, behind any of it? Yeah, why, why? Why? Why do this nasty shit? Why? Why create any of this drama? Right. No- He really, really has a hard time comprehending why anybody doesn't like him, which I find really bizarre for somebody who's in content creation, especially somebody who's as prominent as he is. I always feel as if, in my opinion anyway, some of the most successful people on social media or on in, or the internet at large are usually the people who divide opinion. They have a very fervent fan base that froths at the mouth for everything they do. And they also have a very vocal minority of people that hate everything they do and point it out. But usually the content creators are aware of the reception they will get for whatever they do from both sides of the fan base. Now, the key to it, if you're a great content creator that I've seen watching people from afar, because I'm nobody, I'm just a small potato guy out here. The great, the, the, the genius thing to do it's not pay attention to either and just do what you do. Just double down on your personality. What will end up happening is that your fans that love you will love you even more. And the haters that don't like you, who are a small minority in a grand scheme of things, will continue to keep hate watching your stuff in in and again in a roundabout way, making you more famous and you know, helping you to get to where you need to get to. But what you don't get to do if you're that person that's very divisive is to then come out and cry victim. If you want to earn or if you're going to accept the bucks of being somebody that divides opinion and you're going to somewhat troll and, you know, double down on things and take positions that you don't essentially believe in 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 order to get a rise from somebody, you then don't get to cry foul and start crying and complaining. You don't get to do that. But I'm now wondering to myself whether or not Brian Brennan is actually that sophisticated. Maybe he's just dumb. And maybe he genuinely doesn't understand why people don't like him. He doesn't, can't figure it out. He he just can't wrap his head around it. Which is why he's probably susceptible to people bringing evidence to him about Bobby Lee being some mastermind and him believing it straight away. That might be it. That might be the reason why. He might be legitimately dumb. And he honestly believes the things that he's saying or that the things that have been presented to him. Because this makes no sense. No sense that he's legitimately can't wrap his head around why 60,000 people on the subreddit are collectively saying, you are a douche, you are a douche, you are a douche. Now, are all of them saying it? No, no, let's take a step back. Is it all 65? Probably not. There's probably loads of people who are subbed to that subreddit ages ago and had accounts that are probably dormant. Active people on there might be in the high 10,000s, but still, does that account for all your fans? Obviously not. So why do you care? No rhyme or reason for any of this. Yeah, but I, I just want to just, like, if, even if my team said to me, oh, Whitney Cummings is doing something, right? Already in my heart, I know her. Why would she do that? There is no motivation behind Here's it. Here's my thing, Bobby. So it's if, like, if, why? You have to ask yourself that question. Sure. Yeah. Here's Wait, my thing. Here, I one, yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead. Go. If either two of your, even your, what's your name, brother? Gilbert. And Gilbert. George, right Gilbert and George. If... <laughs> Yeah, that, that hurt. <laughs> Sorry, that, that, that must have hurt. Free- <laughs> that must have hurt a little. <laughs> that's my CT. Nick. That's my CT flare. Oh, this is also his first day here. It is his first day. Okay. It's your first day. <laughs> He's yeah, a brown belt. <laughs> He's a brown belt. He's yeah, a brown belt. Yeah. Choke yeah. you out. Uh, he, <laughs> and Kalila, as as the business operator of yeah. this thing, 
if you guys came to me with the same information and was under fire and the kid, I would want to see it and I'd get to the bottom of it. I have a question about the delicacy or the delicate nature of um, the investigation regarding pedophilia, mm -hmm. regarding this beaten baby mm -hmm. on the subreddit. Mm -hmm. um, as you don't have ownership of that subreddit, correct? That is not your subreddit. No, okay, then why been. are those federal investigators I considering? Said they're not feds. Okay, they're let's say rot. But, but you, if Reddit if, cops, if that is an an active investigation right now, and that is the reason why you cannot show us that information. No, I can't show you. I can't. I can't send you that the documents. So okay, you physically have them in your possession. So they I can show it to you right now. When we get off, I can show you. As soon as we get done, I will show you all the shit I have. You better it's, spit shake on that, Brendan. I mean, why, why wouldn't I? Yeah. I mean. Because I've been asking you. Okay, cool. Let's quickly sub this and get to the super chat. He's talking out of his ass. Um, big up to Joe um, for the $9.99 super chat. I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you so much. He says as follows. CTE is real. This is a prime example of brain damage. You literally can't understand how he thinks because it's damaged. True. He also wants to die on Reddit. He also wants to die on the Reddit hill. He has to deflect the cheating scandal. Yeah, no, I get that. I get the feeling. I, I said before that I think he's in love with Collider. I don't think that's true. I'm obviously being funny and trying to make a joke out of it. I generally do think this is a thing that... <sighs> this was part of his rationale that he explained what happened with Kalila to his missus or to his wife back home. And I think she obviously believed it, even if we think we're lying, she's lying or not. And because it's such a tense thing and such a contentious thing, it's also very, you know, his, his relationship is probably hanging in the balance. So if he allows this to continue and he allows whatever truth narrative this is to get spun, it might cost him his family. You know what I mean? And he also, he's obviously going to fight for that. So I get it, but... It's just, oh, I don't know, man. Surely there's a better way to go about it. That's just how I'm saying. There's a better way to go about this sort of thing, but maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, for weeks. Yeah. And I've been asking to meet. I feel like you've long played me. Uh, uh, you've been asking me to meet in person? No, I've been I asking tried you, where you is person. this? Where Where is this thing? Where is this thing? And you're like, I'm busy. Maybe tomorrow. I'm busy. Just maybe the, tomorrow. Just the docs. Because only and it's I'm like. not busy? Because here's the thing with the docs. It's like they're either not real or we have someone that somehow got a hold and hacked us. We just want to know for ourselves. If right. We and you should. Yeah, but that's and, why it's very important and, we see these. But, and here's my thing. I'm not accusing anybody in here. Mm -hmm. But let's say in some weird world, it's somebody that you, you, you know you're associated and you had no idea it was happening. I still don't give a shit. I just want to stop. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Okay. That's the only reason. That's what, you yeah, hear yeah. that? <laughs> Whoever is the incel living in my backyard, do this. All right, all right so let's ear. do a new segment. Hang on, oh. hang on. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> I have. Segment. I have. Oh wait, oh, wait Kalia, last, yeah. last thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so when you said, I, I flew to Austin to tell Rogan about this. Yeah, that's my next question. No, okay, and can I come? Yeah, yeah, this? yeah, yeah. Flew to Rogan to do the his show. Okay. This is a. a, a aside from that. Okay. Yeah. Copy. And, that that and, makes sense. And I want you to know, as as I look you in the eye. When I would tell them, I I would pre preface with every every time I go, I don't think Bob and Kyle are involved. The Tiger Belly email is on there. Okay. And every every single time, never ever, and I swear on my kids never went. Kyle is a gold digger. Kyle, none of it. Can we just do a so, new segment real quick? So, but, you but, can still but, talk in the new segment. Go ahead. So what Kyle said was still true. He still flew to. He did obviously fly to Austin to do the podcast to promote his special, but he also while he was there told everybody that would be willing to listen about the drama that he basically created for himself and this notion or this story that they were somehow connected or Clyde and Bobby were somehow connected to the flipping fire and the kids suffered it. So what she said happened, happened. But he obviously got shown up and exposed. He didn't know that she was going to say that because she's clearly got, she's clearly well, she's clearly way more well regarded or she's clearly held in a higher sense. Yeah, she's clearly held in a higher um, esteem than he thought she was because she was clearly privy to things that he didn't think would get back to her because he thought he was the, I'm the Rogan's guy. It's like, you might not be, this is also a thing that he might need to be aware of. Like, you might not be as sweet with these people as you think you are. They might just be being sweet to you because you're Rogan's guy, but the moment Rogan 
again, the fire in the kids subreddit, they've been saying it for ages, man. Some people are suggesting that maybe him and Rogan aren't as close as he makes it seem as. And which might be true because if you listen to the recent episode he did with Rogan, you know, he didn't even know he had a thick boy studio. He didn't even know anything. I mean, maybe he was playing dumb so he could explain it on his show. I doubt it. But Joe seemed very unaware of Brendan's life in general. So this might lend some credence to it. Right? New segment. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? That's the segment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I just need to do it. I have, I have OC. That I have was your tension breaker? Yeah, 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 yeah. But overall, George Lab, that's also all I wanted George Lab. To overall, with the but, timeline. But, but, but then also, when you when you went to, so, you know, you got to remember, too, Rogan's like an older brother to me. You When I do anything, I call Rogan. That's how I, that's how I operate. Right. Yeah, yeah. I asked his advice on this, right? And then, um, you know, he would give me his, his advice, how I should handle it. But then the, the other stuff is hiring a, a private investigator. I don't know where the fuck you'd find a private investigator. And just uh, the same when you go, I mean, I would handle it like this. As far as pri a private investigator for what? What the fuck would I hire a private investigator to follow you to do what? I they make sense. So that's what bothers me. Whoever got that back to you. Multiple people corroborating each other's stories, but go ahead. Okay, but it, whatever you told him about me, whether it was uh, how or whatever version you have in your and head that can, what you told him. We can call those people after this and confirm my story. Oh, a thousand percent. If, you, if, 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 if that makes you feel better. It does make me feel yeah, better. Yeah, we can do it. As soon if as we're you, done with this, we will call those three people. Thousand percent. Yep. <sighs> Anyways, would love that. Would love nothing more. When you did tell version, uh, Rogan, your version of events, mm -hmm. I just want to know for my own peace of mind, did he believe it? I don't know. He, he to, to him, it's like you know, you're never gonna beat the internet, man. I mean, no, regarding me and Bobby. No, because I, I I told him it's not you guys. Okay, but everything else regarding the information that got back to me is that you told Rogan things, obviously, that were very slanderous about. He didn't really answer the question though. Kala is asking him when you told Brent when you told him. Yeah, he didn't answer the question. He's he's being. Purposely facetious or whatever, or elusive of the truth. She's saying, when you told Rogan this cockamamie story about us starting this Reddit subreddit about you and hating on you, what did he have to say about it? And he's like, oh, I told him it wasn't true. No, no, no. I know what you said. What did he say about it? He doesn't want to say anything because clearly he, I'm assuming Rogan didn't agree and told him to fucking leave it. And obviously, you know, he couldn't. Me. I'm going to, I want to believe that wasn't the case. In, in all of this stuff, right, there's still, um, you know, people, talk, you know, like the telephone thing, right? Yes, like mm -hmm. things get, telephone. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. If I redo it, I mean, things I would, get right, changed called through her people, other people's communications to others, right? You know what I mean? S some things are not easily proven. You know what I mean? It's he said, she said, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So it's like. You know, I think in terms of what we talked about in this last hour, right, is we got all of it out, mm -hmm. right? Not, not yet. There's more? Go ahead. If you, maybe you got it out. I, I, I was... No, I, I, well, I mean, I'm sitting here listening to it, yeah. right? You know, because what I want to spend time with now is um, getting to a place where we can move forward from it, right? Yeah, I don't and and, and, and we, we create new rules. You know what I mean? I mean that was what yeah. the segment was really called new rules. Oh, but new rules. Uh, Th that's a that's a Bill Maher. And that's why I didn't do it. Yeah. That's why I said oh. new segment. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I did the new segment. You said you new segment again, or yeah, but let's don't don't. I'll, don't I'll do it. I'll do it. Just, I'll just do it. No, just do it. I'll just. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let's get back on track. And, 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 so. Here's what I want to do now, okay? Sorry, my bad. <laughs> New rules. New rules. Um, what, how, from now on, this is how we're going to move forward, okay? Can we do that now? You can have your rules of how you're going to move forward, but I have my own stipulations too. But That's all right. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm not the ruler of this thing. Yeah. Kind of am. <laughs> but <laughs> I kind of am, but, you know. I'm going to end it there for now because it's really late here it's 4 30 and i can't be bothered and maybe I'll, I'll do the next segment actually yeah i'll do that let me actually take a screenshot of this and i'll do that i'll do that as another segment in terms of um 
picking up on their new roles and the other side of things. Um, as who mentioned it before, uh, Domo Creo says, this has been completely useless. I'm even more confused and disgusted than before. Same here. Same here, honestly. I don't know what this served, what purpose this served, what it did. It did nothing but further illustrate and drum home the fact that Brendan is a pretty dodgy dude, to say the least. Brian Callan's a cuck, and the LA comedy scene is full of enablers and awful people who will put their principles and morals to the side if you're in the good books of certain people. Because you'd hope and you'd imagine if this happened to anybody else who wasn't somebody closely associated with Joe Rogan, the treatment of him would be far different than what they're treating Brendan. But because he's so closely aligned with Joe and that whole LA comedy scene, he somehow is being allowed to get away with absolute nonsense to somebody who's legitimately a legend in that scene. Say what you want about Bobby, say if you don't find him funny or not, but he's put in the work, he's done the ten thousand hours, he's part of the you know, the the fabric of that of that little comedy scene they have going on there. He should at least be owed some level of respect and courtesy when it comes to how people talk about him, talk about people he's associated with, people he works with, his flipping wife, his woman, whatever you want to call it. And any and anything else that goes on between them as relationship wise, unless they want to put it out there in public, it shouldn't be used as a weapon against them to get them to fall in line. What an absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. That's all it's shown. It's just highlighted how garbage they all are. And it's also f- further highlighted that everything they speak about on podcasts when it comes to doing other people is just nonsense. It's imposturing. It's moral posturing. They finger wag and point this and say this about other people, but then in their own lives, they do far worse to people who they deem to be friends. If you need friends, if you have friends like this, who needs enemies, isn't it? That's the saying goes. If you have friends like this, who needs enemies? People that are investigating things, gathering documents, coming at you with this, threatening you with that, getting on freeways, flying to places, threatening this, talking to like horrible people, man, the worst. And maybe for for Bobby, it's all a good thing because it shows you who your actual real friends are. Because even though people have been silent, you would assume that people's silence in not backing up Brendan and Brian has been maybe a sly vote of confidence for Bobby Lee. So maybe he's clearly seeing now who his actual friends in comedy are. So that's good. It kind of thins the herd. So you don't keep thinking people that your friends aren't really your friends. Maybe for Kalila too, being a woman in comedy and being solely closely aligned, obviously, with Bobby Lee and everything that he's got up to and whatnot, this might obviously highlight and show her, you know, the treacherous nature that, the treacherous environment that she's basically existed in and she doesn't get a pass just because she's not a comedian. It could also come to her doorstep. Maybe that's going to open her eyes up to be a bit more, you know, a bit more aware of her surroundings, to be on the P's and Q's, to have her head in the swivel. Who knows? And maybe for Brendan too, it's been a success because now he's realised who his actual real life cock holsters are. It's flipping BGL and Brian Callen. They will fly out windows. They will defend Brendan more than they'll defend their own family. Did you hear Brian Callen flipping try and defend or save his marriage the same way he's tried to save and flipping defend Brendan's honour concerning an issue that he got himself involved in by trying to shoot his shot those many years ago? or how many years ago it was. Have you heard him defend anyone the way he's been defending Brendan? So maybe that's a highlight for him, Brendan. He's realised who his actual guys are. For Brian Callan, it's been nothing but negatives. It's just exposed him for being the sleazeball that he we've all kind of hoped that he wasn't. Me especially, being a big fan of his, I still think he's one of the funniest or one of the funnier stand-ups in that whole LA comedy scene extended Joe Rogan universe and he has shown himself up in a big way he threw under the bus not only Chris Alea when he was in his moment of need he also quickly switched up on Bobby Lee when he thought Bobby Lee was responsible for making his best friend sad absolute nonsense man absolute nonsense all of it all nonsense they all deserve each other and at the heart of it, there's two lovely little precious kids. There's a wife who just wants to be loved and drive a G wagon and just have some fun. No one could be, no one should be insulted for that. Who are having to pick up all the pieces? Absolute shocking state of affairs. 
But anyway, um, that's me. I'm done. 